because uh, President Biden has made the announcement that I think most of us expected at some point that he would not seek re-election. you got to go back to LBJ before you had a sitting president who is still eligible for another term. Uh, turn it down. Uh, he did that in March, though. This is pretty late in the process. This is late July. So our guest here is Delegate Mike Pushkin. He is the West Virginia State Democratic Party chairman as well. Mike, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us today. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. You know, I had a, a very rare late night uh, last night. Uh, I'm usually, you know, fairly early to bed, but uh, I got in fairly, very late. You know, West Virginia is hosting the uh, Southern Legislative Conference down at the Greenbrier. So you have state legislators from all over the southern region who are who are being you know welcome to West Virginia. A great event down at the Greenbrier. I just went down for the opening uh, night because a good friend of mine and who I think is one of the most talented singers on the planet right now was from here in Charleston. Sierra Farrell uh, played the opening reception, so I had to go down and, and hear her. However, I, right after and by the way, I know that's not why I'm on here to talk, but if any of your listeners have not or if you haven't yet heard or listened to Sierra Farrell, check her out. Uh, she is a rising star and she is just phenomenal. And of course, I'm biased because you know she, I know her and I love her. But anyway, so as soon as that was over, I had to rush back here because I got some work to do. Yeah, <laughs> that's, little, that's little bit. the Democratic Party. We have some work to do, and I'm sure that's why you had me on. Not talk about music, but it was a phenomenal show from our friend Sierra last night. Hey, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I love hearing those little kind of stories. Did you see? Uh, yeah, talk about music all day. Then, no, go ahead. Yeah, did did you see Mike Hornby down to the fellow who owns this radio station? Uh, see, I did not. I, you know, he was there. I think I believe he was there, but I did I did not run into him. I tell you, I was seated in the front row and just was in awe mm-hmm. of the of the band. I was paying more attention to the band. And you know, a lot of times at political events, you have people walk around and schmoozing and stuff. But I just I was there for the music, and then afterwards, I had to hightail it back to Charleston because I know that uh, you know we have the job of nominating the next president, and that's pretty serious business. So it is. You have to get busy. And you yeah. got you got uh, what looks to be with the endorsement of his vice president Kamala Harris, the odds-on favorite to be the nominee, but. Then out of nowhere, you hear this news about Senator Joe Manchin saying, I may switch my registration back to Democrat and uh, thinking that uh, he might also look to run for president. Uh, Mike, your thoughts on all this stuff? I, I have yet to speak with uh, Senator Manchin, who I consider a friend and somebody I admire. And I know he's always done the right thing for this country, but I, I don't believe he is, he is seeking the nomination. Um, to me, when we elected uh, President Biden, we also voted for a vice president in Kamala Harris. And then the job of the uh, vice president is to step in if, God forbid, the president for any reason can't uh, fulfill their duty as president. So to me, without hesitation, my full support is with the vice president, Kamala Harris. Hey, Rob, the New York Post is reporting that Senator Manchin confirms he will not be running for president. Quote, I don't need that in my life. Well, there you go. Joe, Joe just has a way of getting his name in the news, doesn't he? <laughs> hey, Mike. I, I really I respect uh, Senator Manchin's opinion. I think he always does what's best for the country, and I think he has a very important voice in all of this. Uh, but like I said, my full support is with the vice president. Mike, uh, Bill Stubblefield, are you a voting member <laughs> of the DNC, a, mo- a voting yeah. delegate? Voting delegate, okay. Oh, there's two. Do you mean the convention or the, the, the like the Democratic National? I am a member of the Democratic National Committee as a state chair. All state chairs are voting members of the Democratic National Committee. Now, also as a state chair, I, I'm in the Democratic Party, what would be referred to as now as an automatic delegate, which means I am a delegate to to the convention. In fact, I'm the chair of the West Virginia delegation to the convention in Chicago. However, automatic delegates do not vote on the first ballot. Now, if we go past the first ballot, then I would get to cast a vote. And that's these, uh, that's what used to be called the superdelegate, correct? We no longer call ourselves yeah. superdelegates. We don't get to vote in the uh, on the. We changed that rule. We felt it was undemocratic. I voted to change the rule, uh, but now I'm an automatic delegate, which does we do not vote on the first ballot. Since that title is now free, could we call Bill super co-host? Would you like sure, that? Sure, that'd be nice. Would that yeah, be good that, for you? Yeah. And then I what would we call... He deserves it. Yeah, what, <laughs> what would we call John? Then? Um, Easy. We, we'll, call him, we'll call him late. <laughs> we'll call him later. Hey, Mike, this is John Gilstrap. Are the, the delegates that were uh, committed to Joe Biden now automatically committed also to Kamala Harris? No, it doesn't work like that. But what 
our delegates, and honestly, we had a state convention, unlike the West Virginia Republicans who changed state law in, in the middle of the election. They changed the state law so they wouldn't have to have a convention. And their delegates and their electors were selected by a small group of uh, the Republican Executive Committee. We have, we, even though we didn't have to, we held county conventions that, that elected delegates to the state convention. At the state convention, we elected our delegates to the national convention, and all of our delegates were pledged to President Joe Biden. With his announcement yesterday that he is not seeking uh, re-election, that does open up the process. So we'll be reaching out to our delegates today and let them decide who they're going to support. And we're going to be a very democratic process where the delegates who were elected through these county and state convention process, unlike the Republicans who didn't have it, changed the law so they wouldn't have to do it, uh, we, we're going to you know, uphold the democratic process, and, and it's going to be up to the convention delegates at the nominating convention of our party. And that's what conventions you know, really used to be for, was nominating the, uh, the, uh, the presidential nominees. So there's, is there a reasonable likelihood that, that Kamala Harris will have I don't know, opponents, I guess? People will also be con- trying to get that nomination? Well, we've not heard of anybody who has stepped up to do so, but that they, they could if they were able to, to get enough delegates. They said, I don't want to speak for our delegation. We're going to be you know, Democratic with a small D, and I'm going to reach out to our delegation throughout the day and see where everybody is. But I can tell you that you know, as chair of the West Virginia Democratic Party and just as a, you know, a citizen of this great country, my support goes with the vice president, the person that we elected, in 2020 to serve as the president if something were to happen to our president. So for me, it's a very easy decision to go with the vice president. Now, the money that was raised with the uh, uh, Biden-Harris will will automatically transfer to Harris if she chooses, if she does, if she's a nominee. Is that correct? I I believe that is correct. And I also think it's it's important to note that in the hours, literally in the minutes and the hours after uh, uh, President Biden made this historic uh, announcement. Uh, Vice President Harris uh, had a record uh, fundraising day where she, she's raised around $50 million in a very short period of time. So there is a lot of excitement uh, around uh, her stepping up and her potential to be the nominee. But you know, something I failed to mention earlier, I just really want to ex- express my gratitude for President Biden in the um, in the first of all, in the job that he has done, I think he's going to go down as a very uh, uh, consequential, very monumental uh, president. If you look at the historic legislation that has passed under his watch with his uh, work with Congress, whether it was the American Rescue Plan that saw a record amount of relief dollars come down, bypass the states, so we didn't have another baby dog sweepstakes. It went straight to the counties and straight to the municipalities where the rubber meets the road in order to help us get through that pandemic, and it worked. And we saw an an infrastructure bill that Donald Trump could only talk about every other week, never got it done, and and President Biden got that done, and and we are seeing uh, the rebuilding of our bridges and our roads and our infrastructure in this country. (laughs) And, of course, the, um, the Inflation Reduction Act, which has led to a lot of these announcements that people like Governor Justice and other Republicans, they like to show up for the photo ops and with giant scissors and, and you know gold shovels, the groundbreakings for, for new core or, or uh, form energy, some of the announcements over in the Eastern Panhandle. You know, they, they like to show up and get their pictures taken, but the credit really goes to the President Joe Biden and the work that he did with Congress in order to create this really unprecedented investment that's been really dis- disproportionately helped West Virginia. So first of all, I would like to thank the president for the job that he's done. And I think what he did yesterday was he put the country first. And given all that... And st- he, knows what's at, he knows what's at stake in this election. And he passed the torch on to a new generation in order to preserve uh, this democratic republic that, that, that I hope we don't take for granted and I hope we hold on to. But given all that and stipulating that all of that is, is in fact, the case, doesn't he have a right to be awfully bitter? Because he was already, he had already clinched the nomination. The voters had already spoken that he was their nominee. He had already been, made his decision, and then people kept waiting for him to make the other decision. 
And as of Saturday, he said he was going to be the nominee. And then mm -hmm. on Sunday, kind of forced into making the the other decision. Shouldn't doesn't he have a right to feel kind of bitter about this? I think he has a right to feel any way that he wants. But he was ultimately it was his decision. That's what I've been saying all along. When people have, you know, what do you think? Should the president stay in? Should he get out? Said, that's not my decision. Only one person can make that decision, and that's who made the decision. And I believe the president is is privy to more data, way more data than I have in front of me. And we saw the best course forward was for him to actually step back, do something that's very rare in, in American politics or in politics in general, for somebody in a position of power to step back and give that up and for what he feels is in the best interest of the country. Uh, that should be applauded. That's the type of thing that, that George Washington did. You know, George Washington could have been a king after his – you know, after being president, you know, after winning the Revolutionary War and being president, he could have stayed on. We could have had another king. He did something historic, and he stepped back and allowed for for John Adams to to uh, run for president. Mike, I'm I'm hearing and that it, so that's what I, well, I think was a very patriotic, uh, selfless move that President Biden made yesterday, and and I think he'll go down in history. Uh, in a positive light for it. We're talking to Delegate Mike Pushkin from the West Virginia Legislature. He's the State Democratic Party chair as well. Mike, uh, I heard this morning on a drive-in in, uh, out of uh, Washington, D.C., that Nancy Pelosi played a role in Joe Biden stepping down, that uh, she would have been the only person outside of his own immediate family that would have had uh, relatability with Biden age-wise, experience-wise, uh, friendship-wise, uh, personal relationship-wise, to convince him that this was the time to step away. Have you heard anything about that? I, mean, I know that, I mean, I've heard that she was part of the discussion. I've heard the same thing you have. She was part of the discussion. I imagine Speaker Jeffries was part of the discussion, Leader Schumer, his family. But ultimately, that decision was with President Biden. Yeah. And I was willing to support whatever decision that he thought was best for the country. Because I think he had uh, access to way more information and data uh, than we did on what was the best course going forward. He made the determination that stepping away from power, something the other side, I mean, I think that would be incomprehensible to folks on the other side. On the other side, you had a, a president who lost an election and still wouldn't step away from power, couldn't, couldn't barely remove him from the White House after he lost a free and fair election. And then he, he called on his supporters to go down to the, to the Capitol, and, and we know what happened. And we should never forget what happened on January 6th. That's what happened when someone clings to power who doesn't deserve it. We had the exact opposite of that happen yesterday with what Joe Biden did. But with Pelosi, the specifics of that discussion would be she had a chance to give him a strong endorsement a week ago. Instead, she gave him a very tepid uh, statement of support. They kind of washed her hands of it uh, while seeming to try to throw her influence and in getting him out of office. So she clearly holds a bit more sway than the average person. Well, I would say as a you know, longtime Speaker of the House uh, that she does have, have a lot of sway. I'm sure he listens, listened to her as well as many other advisors and family members. Ultimately, the decision was his, and that was the decision he made, and I support it. Yeah, it was his decision, but did he have a choice? Uh, the uh, money had dried up. Uh, the congressmen, uh, the elected officials were uh, – uh, all ask him to step down. It gets to a point, uh, Mike, that he really, even though he has a choice, he did not have the choice. He's the president of the United States, and he was our nominee, and he had over 90 percent of the delegates. Of course he had that choice, and it was his choice. I think why aren't we ever having this discussion that the candidate that the Republicans just nominated at their event in, in, in Milwaukee was convicted of 34 felonies? incited an insurrection at our nation's capital, uh, was, you know, lost a civil case where the judge determined that he raped a woman. Why are we not talking about the unfitness of that candidate? If we want to talk about the ability to finish a, uh, a, a term, why don't we talk about uh, the, the Republican uh, nominee for Senate here in this state, Governor Jim Justice? Does anybody actually think he's going to show up for a six-year term and well, cast votes at our nation's capital as a senator? Mike, that's a, we talking that's about a convenient that's deflection, but that's really yeah. not the news You're of the day. That's, that's right. why we're not discussing that. One of the reasons we're not discussing that is not the news of the day. So, mm -hmm. uh, However, do you think if they went to someone like Donald Trump and asked him to put the country first, what do you think would happen? So I applaud the president for what he did because you don't see that, that type of selflessness 
on the other side of the aisle right now. Well, I think, it, and I, nobody's arguing against you today. Um, it, I, you know, there's a certain amount of, of spin that everybody's going to put on this. I think there's also, a, I predict, I don't know. Um, there's there's got to be an amount of anger. A lot of a lot of people have pledged a lot of political capital um, behind Joe Biden. And there's the what we're going to hear coming forward is if he's not, um, if, if he doesn't have the mental acuity to make it through and the next debate, which is what this is largely about, does he have the mental acuity to run the White House tomorrow? And should he, in fact, be stepping down from the presidency today and handing the presidency over today to Kamala Harris as his successor as vice president? John, I think that's ludicrous for my position. I, I, but he's shown no signs at all that he's not capable of running the country. I think he's done a very good job of running the country. Yeah. The reasons I stated earlier about passing, uh, working with Congress to pass uh, so much monumental legislation. I talked about the American Rescue Plan. I talked about the Infrastructure Act that was only a, a you know an infrastructure week when Donald Trump was president. We actually have an infrastructure act that has invested in our roads and our bridges and in our infrastructure in this country. About the Inflation Reduction Act, I didn't mention the PAC Act, uh, which actually recognized. Uh, some of the wrongs that were done you know, 50 years ago uh, to our, our men and women in the armed forces with, with Agent Orange and then recognized more recently with burn pits and actually um, uh, yeah, that gone, you know, treated our, our service men and women with the respect they deserve instead of Donald Trump who refers to them as, as suckers. They refer to them as suckers. So well, I think we're talking about fitness for the presidency. Uh, you know, we need to have, be, have a more fair conversation. And I don't think there's anything out of line with me bringing that up. Uh, well, you can talk about yeah, what you want, Mike. I mean, that's, you're right. And, there's, and no, he shouldn't step down as president. He's done a good job. I think what he, he realized that he was not uh, the best one right now positioned to be the best candidate, and that's a difference because he knows what's at stake. Uh, when you have somebody who's standing on a debate, so we talk a lot about about Biden's poor performance at, on the debate, and it was a, it was a bad performance. But on the other side, for the first time ever, I saw a, a nominee from a major party running for president actually have to stand on a debate stage and say, "I didn't have sex with a porn star." I didn't either. <laughs> well, yeah. well, nobody accused you of it. Well, I don't know. We don't, I don't know you that well. But nobody's. I mean, you know what? In your case, a porn star didn't get sworn in under oath and Fair testify enough. in court. And, and President Trump, your former President Trump, had every. Uh, he had every. Um, Mike. He could have been sworn in too. He could have gone in under oath and stated his case. He didn't take the stand because he didn't want to perjure himself because he's a liar. Mike, Mike, hey, Mike, we have two minutes left. We, we really want to get your expert commentary on your party right now, and Bill would like to get the final question in here. Yeah, and uh, uh, let's assume that uh, Harris is going to be the nominee. There's a lot of talk about vice presidents. Uh, who would you like to see as vice president? Well, I think, you know, the list that I've seen, and I don't think it's anything official, but names have been floating around Governor Cooper in North Carolina. He would be a great pick. Governor uh, Bashir over in, in Kentucky, he would be a great pick. Um, there's been talk about Governor Shapiro in Pennsylvania. And Mark Kelly's name has been floated around. I think those all would be great picks, and and, and we'll see. I mean, that's, that's yet to come. I, don't, I think that, um, I, I tell you what, any of them are going to be head and shoulders above J.D. Vance who's what served a couple years in the Senate and wrote a, a fictional autobiography that denigrated the, the people of this part of the country. I would take any of those names over somebody like, you know, a huckster like J.D. Vance. Mike, I got 90 seconds rema uh, remaining till you have to go. What's Let's make the best of it. <laughs> what, yes. What's the next thing that you have to do as the state Democratic Party chair? Well, I'm going to be on the phone all day, just like I was you know, yesterday. I was able to take a nice little break and hear some great music down to Greenbrier, but then rushed back here. I'm going to be reaching out to our delegates and our committee members, and um, you know, and, and other uh, our candidates and other Democratic supporters, and just have a, little, a lot of uh, productive conversations. And I'm tell you what, you know, yesterday I believe was also a very sad day. It was sad to see somebody that we love and somebody we feel has done such a great job for this country have to make that very difficult. It must have been a very difficult decision for him to something that's that incredibly rare in politics to step away from power and put the country first wouldn't it be great if everybody did that 
the step away from power and the, and the and the bitterness and put the country first. And that's what we saw yesterday. But I'd say it was it was it was not a, a joyous occasion. It was not. It was very sad to see. And my heart goes out to him and his family. Um, but we are going to uh, you know go into our convention in Chicago and we are going to come out stronger and more united than ever. And we're not just going to uh, win the, the White House, but we're going to win uh, races up and down the ballot because uh, we feel that uh, we better represent the values of the people and you know fighting for a good living wage, a safe workplace, good public schools, good roads, and to treat everybody with dignity and respect that they deserve, everybody. So I feel pretty good about where we are right now. Mike Pushkin, thank you so much for your time this morning. Hey, thank you. It's great to come on. Thank you. <laughs> 